Tara and welcome to another reading vlog. I am so excited for today's reading vlog because today is Tuesday the 19th of May and I've just had an Amazon delivery which I'm very very excited to open so let's get into it. So I actually got two books in here. One is not relevant to today's video and that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern which I'm reading for a readathon in June, but the book that this is all about is, of course, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Woohoo! I'm so excited. It was such a roller coaster with this book because I pre ordered it. And then last week I got an email to say, so today is actually obviously the publication date, the 19th of May, but last week I got an email to say that I wasn't going to be getting it until the 27th of May. So I was like, oh my god, there's going to be so many spoilers and I just wanted to be able to read it like quite soon after it was going to be coming out. And then I got another one saying it was going to arrive on the 21st, which is my birthday. So I was quite pleased about that because that was only two days late. And then today I finally got an email to say it was actually going to arrive today. So I'm so excited about this one. You might have seen, but a few weeks ago I actually read the whole Hunger Games series for the very first time as part of a 24 hour readathon. So I'll link that video so you can go and check it out there. But I fell in love with the series. I thought it was so good. And the reason I read that series was because of all of the hype surrounding this prequel. And I really wanted to get in on it, but I of course wanted to read the Hunger Games first. And so this is the prequel, which I'm sure most of you are already aware of. And it essentially focuses on the president of Pan Am, who we get to know slightly in the Hunger Games series, President Snow, and it's all about his backstory. And that is really all I know going into this book, and I'm so excited to get started. So essentially, for the next couple of days, I'm just gonna be focusing all of my attention on reading this book, and hopefully finding a new favorite. I'll of course be keeping you updated all the way through, and I'm hoping to finish this one today or tomorrow. It's currently Tuesday afternoon, so I reckon tomorrow is probably slightly more realistic because it's my birthday on Thursday, so I kind of want to have it done by then. But I'm so excited, like I said, cannot wait, and I'm so happy that it actually arrived today instead of having to wait like a week for it to turn up. So, cannot wait to get into this one. I'm actually just about to go out for an afternoon walk because it's a really sunny day today, and we're having some very nice weather this week. So I'm gonna go out for a walk, and then when I get back, I'm going to get straight into this. Oh, my child, I know You hurt and you can't let go It's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad and the hurt Like I said, I had a couple of FaceTime calls today and then also a yoga class as you saw, but other than that, the day just seems to be being eaten up and it's already 5 p.m. so don't know what's happened there. But I've only managed to read just about 60 pages so far of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So of course, I'm not very far in whatsoever, but what I've read so far is very, very interesting. I'm finding it really interesting to be sort of introduced into President Snow's life, or of course, as he's called in this, Coriolanus, because he obviously is not a president at this point in this story. He is just an 18 year old boy trying to sort of climb his way up and figure out what he wants to do with his life. And so I feel like he's definitely an interesting character because 
we obviously have that unique perspective of knowing where he ends up in the Hunger Games, but at this point he seems like quite a nice, well-meaning character who is kind of just like trying to figure out what he wants to do and try and make the best situation for him and his family. We also have this sort of interesting sense of his shame being explored because he's a person who's from a very well-known and ancient family but they're no longer rich and he's basically trying to sort of cover that up and he's kind of doing a little bit of the fake it till you make it style where he's basically just acting as though he is still a very rich person and trying to sort of ride the privilege that his name gives him in order to try and get to a point where he doesn't have to pretend anymore because he will be rich. I feel like it's really interesting to see that sort of expectation of what someone of his standing would be in terms of like his social standing and what people expect from the Snow family and then the reality of it and how they're sort of trying to hide it and it's just really interesting because I feel like he's definitely feeling a lot of pressure and really wants to get out of that situation so that he doesn't have to pretend anymore so it's really intriguing to see that and I do feel like because of that and the fact that he seems quite nice and he's just trying to do the right thing for his family he is definitely a sympathetic character looking at him objectively just as we've seen him in this book but of course when you kind of marry that up with what you see of him in the actual Hunger Games series it's really hard to feel sympathy for the character because you obviously know how terrible he ends up being but I just think villain backstories are so interesting because I really want to know how he gets from being this sort of relatively innocent and ambitious but like sort of you know like confused young boy who doesn't really know what to do and how to get out of his situation to this very very power focused president that we see in the original trilogy. I also think it's interesting because like I mentioned he is from this like ancient family and there is a lot of sort of like status sort of power given within this society and I feel like we're sort of seeing a difference between him as someone who is from one of these sort of older and more established families and then some people who have kind of been described as like social climbers who've kind of made their way up from the districts and with wealth are sort of inserting themselves into capital society but in sort of Snow's eyes don't really belong there and are kind of like sort of stealing his thunder and I feel like it's kind of similar to what we see in The Great Gatsby as we kind of have that comparison of East Egg and West Egg and this sort of like old money and people who are like respectable because their money has been around for years and then people who've actually sort of earned it and made their way up and how those people somehow despite having actually earned their money and worked for it are then seeing as more like vulgar and crude because of the way that they've pursued wealth and it's really interesting to see that explored in this context. Now like I said I haven't really read too much so far but I am planning to get quite a lot more done this evening so I've pretty much got nothing else on for the evening except for having dinner and also trying not to melt because it is boiling hot today. In the grand scheme of things across the world it's probably not that hot it's like mid 20s but it feels really hot to me so i'm just currently trying to not melt and yeah i'll catch up with you when i've read some more in a little bit i know you've done your part it's not fair you did your time how much longer will you suffer in this life but don't give up Hold on tight It'll be alright Friday morning and clearly I didn't film any updates yesterday because it was my birthday. I did a separate vlog for my birthday with like birthday unboxings and things like that but I didn't do any reading whatsoever so of course I didn't have any Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes updates to give you but I thought I would catch up with you now because I am definitely planning to read most of this book today. I really really want to get it done. Obviously when I first started this book on Tuesday I was like yeah I want to finish this by Wednesday and it just didn't end up happening but I'm I'm gonna make it happen. So I first thought I'd say because I gave you a bit of an update on my overall thoughts but I also thought I would share a couple of quotes that I really liked from the beginning section of the book. So the first one <laughs> is all about when I mentioned how the book kind of sort of delves into like 
status and how Coriolanus has a lot of shame about the fact that his family don't you know like have the amount of money that people maybe expect of them and they've kind of like fallen in like wealth but they're still trying to keep that status up there and his grandma in particular really has that sort of opinion and she's kind of the one who really wants to keep them up there and really values the name Snow and he basically says like if he doesn't win or get any value from being a mentor in the Hunger Games and they kind of just end up being really poor then there's kind of no point and he says particularly for his grandma he says the disgrace would kill his grandmother it would be kinder to toss her out the window of the penthouse at least that would be quick <laughs> and I just thought that was so funny because I'm like some people just really need to get over themselves because it's like is is your whole entire life really worth just like status and money and everything and I just feel like it's really hilarious how much they care about it but also kind of sad because it obviously has a negative effect on his life and then the other one was quite soon after oh it was the language that they use when it says District 12 girl, she belongs to Coriolanus Snow because he becomes the mentor for the District 12 girl and I just feel like it's really interesting how obviously in this 10th Hunger Games it's the first one that they're having mentors in but rather than being previous victors because there's only been 10 games so far it's like that they get given a mentor from the Capital Academy School and so Snow is obviously the mentor for District 12 but I just feel like that use of word like belong is really interesting and I'm intrigued to see how that is gonna sort of play out throughout the rest of this book because I feel like that is a very conscious choice of word like belong has a lot of meaning and really sort of implies how these district like tributes were viewed by people in the capital and I feel like it's just gonna be interesting to see how that maybe develops throughout the rest of the book. So I'm currently on page 125. I've just been doing a little bit of reading this morning. I'm planning to go and make some pancakes for lunch because literally made pancakes on Tuesday and they were literally the best food I think I've ever had and so now I just can't stop thinking about them. So I'm gonna go make some pancakes and then do some more reading as well. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in city life. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open Sounded so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday, baby. Don't you understand that we only get one life? I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and say, I saw so what. To God, I cannot like even get through one mug of tea without spilling it on myself. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Hopefully, I can drink this one without spilling it. But I'm currently about 200 pages into this book. I feel like I'm reading this one so slowly, and I think partially it's because I'm lazy, and then also partially just because I don't want to miss any details. And I do feel like this one definitely feels like it's maybe written for a slightly older audience than the original Hunger Games and I'm not sure if that was kind of like intentional because of obviously Suzanne Collins kind of known that she'd be like marketing this book predominantly to people who were obviously fans of the original series and they've obviously grown up a little bit and also I think partially it's a little bit more straight into the politics which I think the original Hunger Games trilogy doesn't do until like the second book and the first one is kind of a bit more introductory so I feel like I'm just not wanting to miss any of the details but I do have a few thoughts. First of all I just think it's so interesting to see like the well obviously like 
backwards evolution of the Hunger Games because obviously we're looking at what it was like at the very very beginning and it's so interesting because obviously like mentors are new and then like the way that the tributes were treated is just so different and there's a bit where something has happened and there's like medical intervention needed and the mentors who are obviously capital people are treated by doctors in the hospital and then when Coriolanus asks about his tribute they say like he's like basically like is she gonna be okay is she at the hospital and they said oh I wouldn't know said the doctor but they've got a top-notch veterinarian over at the zoo where they're keeping them all and it's just so wild because in the obviously like later Hunger Games that we see in the original trilogy they are obviously still treated in a very like animalistic way in the sense that they're just kind of paraded around but it's turned into so much more of a show at that point and so they are still like kind of like treated to an extent which in and of itself is still really twisted because they're obviously kind of like being sort of like made up for slaughter but in this case they're just treated like they're already pretty much gone right from the beginning and it's just so weird how they're seen like so clearly as like subhuman so that's really really interesting and because of that we're seeing President Snow being like he's kind of like I feel like walking a tightrope and on one side he's got the side of him that is obviously ambitious and wants to succeed and then there's the other side of him that's like caring and really feels like what's been done is wrong and he doesn't really like how the tributes are being treated and so I'm really intrigued to see how he gets from this point to where we see him in the original trilogy. So I'm gonna put a timestamp up on the screen now because I have a little theory and it's probably nothing major but like just in case you don't want the theory in case it is true and it's an accidental spoiler I'll put it up just so you don't have to listen but essentially what I think is going to have happened is that he obviously becomes really really attached to his tribute who he's already quite close to and then like puts his all into trying to save her and I assume that she eventually is gonna die and that that is gonna kind of like shatter his illusion that being a good person and trying to help someone can actually make any difference and so he kind of just like goes to the dark side because he kind of starts to think that when he's tried it hasn't worked so kind of like what's the point he might as well just try and save himself so that's my guess is that I just think that she's gonna die and then he's gonna become like distraught and then kind of go extra evil as a result but I'm obviously gonna have to read on and find out so let's do it. Take my hand. Hey darling, I love it when it's me and you on the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two. Hey darling, no, we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open yeah, the countryside. Well, I finally feel like I'm making some progress with this book. I feel like I've been reading this one a lot, lot slower than I expected to, but I feel like I'm finally getting into it a little bit more. But before I get into my thoughts on what I've read today, I just wanted to mention how much better the underneath, like the actual hardcover is than the dust jacket. I feel like the dust jacket is just very average like it is in keeping with the Hunger Games style but I just way prefer this I love the yellow and I love how like simplistic it is but then like the snake is just such a statement however although I do love this Jay actually pointed out that he was confused how come there was no songbird on it because obviously it is the ballad of songbirds and snakes and I definitely think this book and the like design of all of the like chapter headers and everything which all kind of look just like this with a snake on top are definitely more on the ballad of snakes rather than songbirds and because there definitely really doesn't seem to be as much reference to songbirds so that's the one thing that I feel like it would have been slightly cooler if there was some bird imagery as well but aside from that I absolutely love this and I'm so glad that it's got a cool underneath hardcover because I usually don't buy like hardcovers because I hate dust jackets and they just a ribbit rubbish I really don't enjoy them but obviously I wanted to read this one just as soon as it came out so that's why I ended up buying the hardcover so I'll probably just keep it naked because I just much prefer it like this than with the dust jacket on 
But like I said, I feel like I'm making some good progress with this one now. I'm currently 369 pages in. So I've probably got, like, this one's got just over... 500 pages so I've probably got maybe about 150 pages left to go and I'm very intrigued because I don't well my prediction that I made was not accurate so I'm really intrigued to see like where it's going to go because at this point in the story so we're like a good two-thirds in and I still think Coriolanus is like a relatively likable character aside from that just like you know lingering remembrance of who he is in the Hunger Games series I think looking at him objectively in this he's actually a relatively likable character so I really don't know where it's gonna go and when he's gonna sort of like make his turn like there are definitely a few negative character traits that you see in him obviously his like shame about his sort of wealth situation his desire for power and in fact there is actually a quote somewhere which I can see if I can find which essentially said Hmm. It was a really good one, which is why I wanted to mention it. Okay, I've no idea where the quote is, but essentially it was Coriolanus thinking about his dad and saying how he was nothing like his dad aside from sharing a name because his dad had like power and wealth and these are the things that he kind of was lacking in his life so he's very much driven by power and he has this sort of warped or maybe not even warped maybe it is accurate for Panem but this sense and belief that with wealth comes so much ease and power and how wealth is essentially tied to either making your life so much easier or of course lack of wealth can make life so much harder and so I feel like he's definitely got that and then in his relationship to his mentee Lucy Gray we definitely see some like sort of sparks of jealousy flaring up which are obviously not excellent traits but other than that I feel like for the most part he is like a relatively likeable and good-natured and like well-meaning character so I'm intrigued to see where it goes and where he kind of like spins off towards the dark side. And there were actually a couple of other things that I sort of had noticed coming up right throughout the book. And there's an interesting theme, so obviously he was a mentor and he was kind of struggling with obviously wanting to further his own position and make himself better, but then starting to see the tributes as like genuine people and then struggling with his sort of involvement in their eventual demise because obviously like 23 of 24 tributes are going to end up dying so he feels sort of very conflicted about that and his cousin tries to make him feel better and basically just says you know your children as well even though you are sort of involved in the demise of these other children you're just a child as well and you're just a sort of another pawn in the capital's games and I feel like to an extent that is true however he's 18 years old and so it's like at what point do you sort of cross that boundary between being a child and just having to accept what is told to you by authority figures and being an adult who can make your own decisions and having to take responsibility for your own sort of moral ideologies. So I feel like it's an interesting sort of balance. Like I said, I feel like a lot of this book is about him kind of being on his tightrope and sort of struggling to navigate which side he wants to be on and it's a very very thin line and I feel like that's definitely sort of the theme of childhood is so interesting in this sense because as long as you can hold on to that status as being a child you can kind of I guess push some of your responsibility onto other people but as soon as you accept your status as an adult you then have to really take responsibility for your own actions and your own beliefs and whether or not you act in accordance with your morals. So really enjoying it actually I've seen for some reason a lot of people saying that they don't like it but I really am enjoying it so oh there was one of the quote as well actually which was I feel like something that kind of summarized the Hunger Games overall and that was essentially so Snow is talking to one of his teachers who knew his dad from when he was younger and he basically says I thought you were friends with my dad and then he says I thought I was too once but it turns out I was someone he only liked because he could use them and I just feel like that is a very very indicative of how this world of Panem works and how all these alliances are formed throughout the games and everything it all really comes down to how you can use people to better your own situation and it's so hard to trust people because everyone is always working with an ulterior motive so I feel like that's a really interesting thing that we still see being very very much sort of present in the sort of initial Hunger Games trilogy as well so I'm really enjoying it I'm definitely hoping to finish it today so 
this afternoon is currently about 2 p.m. and I'm about to go into a yoga class which I'm attending as a student and then I'm also teaching a yoga class after that and then pretty much the rest of the day is free for reading so I'll catch up with you later on. It's so pretty with the wind blowing in your head. I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Ooh. Ooh. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty. With the wind blowing in your head. So I'm very happy to say that I finally finished off reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I'm thinking this is going to be a four star read for me because I definitely enjoyed it but I don't think that the characters were quite as compelling as the ones that we have in the original Hunger Games trilogy and I think partially that comes down to the fact that you kind of recognise the main character as a villain primarily because you know how he ends up and that kind of puts a bit of distance between you as the reader and the protagonist because you can't really get behind them as much knowing where his future kind of takes him. But like I said, for the most part, looking at him as the character that he is in this book, I'd say that for parts one and two, he's a really likeable character and one that you can definitely empathise with. Like I said earlier, he definitely has some less than brilliant traits, but for the most part, you can see like the good in him as a character. But I feel like once we get into part three, this is kind of where I lost my way with the story a little bit. It was still enjoyable, but I feel like there was a dramatic shift in him as a character almost to get him to that point where he needs to be the President Snow that we kind of come to recognise him as. And I feel like we had a much more level development of character in parts one and two and then it just really changed in part three and I just felt like it was a little bit too dramatic. But overall, I feel like this was a very interesting story. I think villain backstories are so interesting. I think of the Harry Potter books, the Half-Blood Prince is one of my favourites because you get to hear about Voldemort's backstory and I just think it's so interesting to see how villains come to be where they are at the point where you see them as being just like purely bad and I feel like having that sort of development and journey towards that really adds a lot of depth to them as characters and I feel like if I was to summarise this book I would say it is really a book about self-preservation and about like doing what you can to further yourself as a character and I feel like in this book it kind of deals with the fact that people don't really want to admit that people like to sort of view themselves as like good and wanting to help other people and we have this sort of debate in this book where some characters think that people are inherently bad and other ones think that people have inherent good within them and I think in this book we see Snow going on this journey of basically struggling at first with deciding whether or not to put himself first or to try and help other people and eventually making that decision to just entirely focus on self-preservation and I feel like it's a really interesting look into someone's descent into darkness and sort of his experiences with some of the nicer things in life and the sort of kinder and more empathetic and humane side to his character and how gradually that was chipped away but I do think my main critique of this is that his character between parts two and three seems to change quite dramatically and I don't think it necessarily has the best explanation behind it. I just feel like he starts acting in a way that is so strictly in line with the Capitals viewpoint whereas in the first two sort of bits of the book we start to see him sort of doing things that could be considered quite rebellious and not necessarily in line with the Capitals views and so I feel like to see him go from that to someone who was then willing to sacrifice friendships, relationships and just start to like put himself entirely first and also put just like abstract political views of the capital above people's lives was just so dramatic and I don't think it really bridged the gap between those two sides of his character very well like to what made him sort of start making those decisions if that makes sense I feel like we saw him right through having this struggle of morality between capital and his own feelings but I feel like for the most part of the book he 
definitely leaned more towards following his own feelings and being empathetic and caring about other people and then suddenly in part three we just see him switch and I don't think it's very well explained. So overall definitely definitely enjoyed this book. Four stars because I think like I said there were some gaps in the plot and also I just wasn't quite as attached to the characters as I was to the ones in the Hunger Games. I feel like President Snow was kind of like the main thing that carried this story but I didn't really find myself being particularly attached to any of the other like side characters and so overall definitely good. I really really did enjoy it and I'm so glad that I've read it. Villain backstories are super interesting and I'd definitely recommend picking this one up if you haven't got it already because I know there's definitely been some mixed reviews but personally I really liked it. I think it was a really nice addition to like the original Hunger Games trilogy. It gives a lot of context not only about characters that we see in the original trilogy like President Snow but also just about Panem and the evolution of the Hunger Games in general. So I thought that was really interesting and I definitely enjoyed reading about it. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing all of my thoughts on this book. I obviously definitely enjoyed reading it. If you've read this book yet definitely let me know your thoughts down below because I would love to talk to you about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.